Welcome everyone to our next YouTube video. This is part of a series of videos about alternative driving methods for power wheelchairs. We had an earlier video that talked about an alternative driving method known as the head array. And in that video, we talk about what the head array is, what the clinical indicators are. Today, we're going to look at nine various head arrays that are available on the market so that you have an idea of what the specific product features are of each to better match one of these to the client that you're working with or to meet your own needs. This is our list. There's quite a few of them. So hang on and let's take a look. First, we have Adaptive Switch Labs. They came out with the original uh, head array quite a number of years ago in the late 1980s. It consists of a tripod head array, which we can see here on the upper right side. Each of these pads contains a proximity switch. And as the client comes in contact with the pad that's close enough to activate this proximity switch, no actual force is required, just proximity to the switch to activate it. And that leads to movement of the chair forward, left and right. Now, over the years, they have modified this head array. So there's versions that have straight or side, uh, straighter uh, curved side pads, shorter side pads called mini or nub. And then on the bottom here, you can see they have an elite and ultra head array. The elite instead of having a side pad on a simple hinge, has a separate side pad with a ball joint back here uh, attached to the rear of the uh, head ray itself and another ball joint attached to the actual side pad. This allows for very precise placement. That's important because our clients might use very specific movement patterns. And this helps me to better match those movement patterns. The Ultra adds on a sub occipital pad and that tucks in right at the base of the skull that provides some extra stability and can really help our drivers do a better job. For myself, I almost always recommend a configuration with these separate side pads with more adjustability and I usually recommend a sub occipital pad. Now ASL has updated these a bit, so we now have the ASL Proton, which is an updated version of the Elite, and the ASL Element, which is an updated version of the Ultra. Now, a couple years ago, ASL came out with the Atom Head Array, and this Atom had some more sophisticated features. So there's a programming box on the back of this that allows for some additional features, additional changes that can be a benefit to the client. So for example, you can plug in something called a user switch into this box, and this can allow the client to turn on and off the head array itself. So rather than turning off the power to the entire chair, the client can just simply turn off the head array. Why is that important? Well, when we're using a head array, it's hard to rest against this head support. I am using it for driving, and if I rest my head against the back pad, I'm moving. So it's nice to have an option to either turn off the chair or the head array itself when I'm not actually driving, allowing me to rest. This user switch has some other uses as well. If I hold it down for a long enough amount of time, and that's programmable, I'll hear a long beep, and now I can use one of my directional switches to send a signal to an interface device. Well, a device that we used to interface. So I can send a wireless switch signal to a speech generating device, a computer, a tablet, where before I required a separate interfacing component and interfacing cable. Those are very expensive. Now I can simply do so using this wireless switch feature, again, using the user switch. Now, when I'm using a head array, I have to have a way of getting into reverse. And many of the electronics on the market require a quick tap behind my head, and that's going to toggle forward and reverse. But that's difficult for some clients. And so the Atom allows for another option where a longer hold can be used on RNET and QLogic electronics to toggle forward and reverse. And then finally, I can turn on auditory feedback. Proximity switches really don't make any noise, not like a mechanical switch. So as the client approaches a switch, you can have an auditory tone sound to provide additional feedback that the switch has actually been activated. This can get annoying rather quickly, so you can turn it off as well. 
and finally ASL has just come out with a brand new head array called the Fusion. Now I've had a chance to see it but I didn't take any pictures and it's not yet on their website. Again very very new. So check it out. Keep your eye out for it when it does show up on the website. It's more programmable than the Atom. It actually has a separate little programmer that you can plug into it and make a few changes. One unique thing about the Fusion is that each of those pads in the head array contain both a proximity and a mechanical switch, similar to the switch at Dual Pro, and we'll talk about that in a moment. By pushing against the mechanical switch with a little more force, the speed of the chair will increase. So now we have proportional speed control even though we don't have proportional directional control as this is a switch drive. Now keep in mind for some clients, the more they push into a switch, that can lead to increased tone and as a result, less control. So it's important to make sure this is a safe feature to use with your client. They might have difficulty coming off of the switch for stopping if they're exerting a lot of force. That brings us to Permobile. Permobile has the total control head array system, and it was one of the first head arrays that lets us combine proximity and mechanical switches. So if you're working with a client where proximities are working for some of these directions, but perhaps they do better with some sort, some uh, style of mechanical switch for one or all of these uh, switch locations, you can combine these in this particular device. Another unique thing about the total head control is that there are two proximity switches in the back pad. You can program this so that both switches have to be activated or only one. But the main reason for these two switches is as I rock my head to the side to try to execute a turn, on some head arrays I might lose contact with the rear single proximity pad and that can be a problem. I might now get a very sharp turn instead of that more diagonal veer that I was aiming for. So by putting two switches behind the client, that's less likely to happen. The client is less likely to lose contact with the rear proximity switch. There are six input jacks on the back of this, and again, they support electrical and mechanical switches. Then we have the Stealth Products iDrive. This is the iDrive head array and it comes in various configurations. So you can get it in that tripod head array style with the hinges on the back like we've seen before. Or you can see on the right, we can get this in the Pro series where we can have those separate swing away pads that have much more adjustment for that precise placement. We can pop a sub occipital pad on there as well. We can mount other switches like this egg switch that's mounted here and that can work well for a reset, for example. This also allows us to combine mechanical and proximity switches. And again, this and the Permobile system are very unique in this when they first came out. We really just could never make those mechanical and electrical switches work together. This does allow that. So there's some really unique features about iDrive. It has very high speed electronics and that smooths out the driving experience. Switch driving can be tricky. I'm going forward, I'm going left, I'm going right. And with the head array, I can have those diagonals. This works so, so quickly that it makes the head array feel almost as if we're driving with a proportional control because the electronics are responding so very, very rapidly. So this is a very advanced feel when someone is driving. Another unique feature with all the iDrive access methods is that they have their own programming software. So in addition to the programming that's available on the power wheelchair electronics itself, like RNET, Lynx, Q logic. We also have this programming system on top of that to allow for some additional programming features. The programming can be done by a computer, by a tablet, eventually even by a smartphone. This is Bluetooth compatible, so I can now program wirelessly. I don't have to actually plug in to this box to accomplish any programming that I do. 
So the Pro Series works with the whole variety of Stealth Products head supports, and they do have quite a bit of them. So I can combine this with the eye-to-eye -eye as pictured here on the bottom. Again, I can add that sub-occipital pad. The ball joints on that swing away assembly allow for really precise placement, as we've mentioned before, and that's really, really important. And it also allows those components to move out of the way fairly regularly and then lock back in in a consistent placement. Maybe that has to move out of the way for a transfer. If someone's using a sling, for example, those slings often hit these side pieces on a head array or other head supports. It's nice to get them out of the way so things don't break. You can also change the upholstery type, even the color. There's other options that are unique to the iDrive head array. It can be used with the Stealth Products iClick mouse emulation software. So now I can use my head array as a mouse emulator. And that's uh, a nice feature for a lot of our clients because someone who's driving with a head array uh, most likely has other assistive technology needs as well. Also, this will control an app that's available right now for free on tablets and smartphones and such called Loons. And Loons is a fun game to just play. It can also be used to help firm up mobility skills. So this is also something that's compatible with the iDrive head array. And then we have Switch It. Switch It also had one of our earliest head arrays on the market. You could see this tripod head array here. And within this tripod, you could put the traditional three switches, forward, left, and right. But you could also add to those distal ends of the pads power or mode switches as well. So this supported three, four, or even five proximity switches. You could order this with short or long wings straight or curved, similar again to adaptive switch labs. More recently, SwitchIt came out with the Dual Pro. And you can see that on the back of the rear pad, we have some programming options. Like the new ASL Fusion, the Dual Pro contains mechanical and proximity switches within each pad, and it has three modes of operation. In the first mode of operation, only the proximities are active, and this will drive like a typical head array. In the second mode of operation, only the mechanicals are active. As the client pushes into a mechanical switch, not only will the chair move in that direction, but the more the client pushes into the switch, the faster the chair will move in that direction. And then finally, in the third control option, both sets of switches are active. Why? Well, proximities as an electronic switch tend to react very quickly. And so the chair starts off, it's very responsive as the client approaches that pad. But the mechanicals provide speed control as the client leans into them. But again, remember that increased force can lead to increased tone difficulty stopping, even increased fatigue. So I hope this was helpful as we talk about the very many head arrays that are available on the market. Uh, I encourage you to check out our other videos as well. And thank you very much for your time.